Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Our Board of Education meeting tonight. I appreciate you. We also welcome those who are watching on the TV. And with that, we'll call our meeting to order. Good evening, Mr. Chair, and good evening, members of the Board of Education, as well as the folks who are with us uh, present here at the Staff Development Center, and as Mr. Bramlett said, uh, those folks that are watching us online as well. Uh, Mr. Bramlett, did you have a message that you wanted to pass along on behalf of uh, Board Member Mike Cole? Indeed. Mr. Cole is, is not feeling well this evening and is unable to join us, but he has thoroughly reviewed our agenda and agrees with all of the recommendations uh, that have been put forward. Thank you, sir. All right, the next item, Mr. Chair, is the invocation, and for that I'm going to ask Reverend Scott Mathis, who will come to the podium, if everybody would please stand and then remain standing for the pledge to the flag, which will be led by Martha Williams. Reverend Mathis. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we just thank you for this great day you've given us, God. We thank you for the rain you've given us. Thank you for the many blessings that you give us each and every day, God. I pray that you'll uh, just bless this meeting this evening, and uh, what a blessing it is, God, to live here in Fannin County and to just be a part of the Fannin County school system, God. Uh, I want to lift up each and every one of our board members this evening, God. I pray that you would give them uh, wisdom and uh, just uh, guidance in every decision they have to make, God. Pray a special prayer for uh, Brother Mike as he's out this evening, God. Just pray for healing for him as well. And uh, I thank you, God, that you listen when we pray, God. And uh, I know each one of these men pray to you daily, God, and I'm thankful for that. And I want to pray for Mike and for Shannon, God, and just uh, their leadership and just continue to be with them and uh, guide them and just use them in the position that you put them in, Lord. And uh, just thank you for always being with us through all of life's challenges, God, and uh, difficulties. You're so good to us, and I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Ms. Williams? Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Mr. Chair, next item on the agenda is to approve the consent agenda. This is comprised, as always, of two parts, the approval of tonight's agenda and then also the approval of past minutes. Uh, we have those past minutes up on the screen at this time from the January regular Board of Education meeting held on the 12th at 5.30 p.m. here at the SDC. Mr. Inslee will scroll through those. Thank you, Mr. Inslee. With that, Mr. Chair, I recommend passage as presented. Board, we have a recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. For the motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. All of the, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote is unanimous. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, number five, appoint acting superintendent of meetings. It is my pleasure to recommend our executive director and my successor, the incoming superintendent of Fannin County Schools, Shannon Miller, to serve as the acting superintendent of the remainder of this meeting, any meetings that could be held in the month of February, and those meetings that are in the month of March. So I make that recommendation proudly for Ms. Miller. Very well. Do I hear a motion? You have a second. Third. Motion second and third. I doubt there's any discussion, but hearing none, all those in favor, it's unanimous, motion carries. And with that, I'm going to turn over this chair to Ms. Miller. Thank you, Dr. D. Thank you, board, community, my team. We are blessed, divinely blessed. With that, Mr. Chair, I would like to introduce Dr. Huff, who is going to be bringing forth some of our very educated spellers to recognize them tonight. Dr. Huff. Good evening, everyone. We have the special privilege tonight of having several of our folks 
from our school spelling bee here with us. We're going to start tonight with the winner of the Blue Ridge Spelling Bee, Mr. Hashem Eastman. Hashem Eastman. Stand right up here in the front. He is also the winner of our District B and will go on to represent Banning County on February 25th at the District Spelling Bee. Next, from East Bannon, we have Mr. Trenton Thurman. And Trenton is also a very fine speller. Trenton, come on down. Uh, Angelo McDonald, I'm not sure if Angelo... Good evening, Angelo. Come on down here and stand with these fellows. Angelo is our winner from West Bannon Elementary, and he was the runner-up. So if Hashem weren't able to go and represent us on the 25th, Angelo would get to have that privilege. And then from Fanning County Middle School, Chance Key is our middle school winner. And these boys uh, represented their, their schools and their families very well in our spelling bee here. Excellent. So very proud of you, Dr. Huff. If you will get with them and board these wonderful spellers, please. I'd like to invite Miss Deputy Superintendent Betsy Hyde to do an SGT update, please. Good evening, board. Uh, as you know, our SGTs only have to meet six times a year, so they don't have to meet every month. So East Fannin and West Fannin did not meet in January. Blue Ridge met on Jan January the 19th. And this is the time of the year all three of our schools, our principals went over uh, their SIP plans, their clip plans, their student engagement, and then their federal budgets. And they looked at their budgets and they looked at all their, and reviewed all their expenditures. So all three schools did that at the meeting. And Blue Ridge, uh, they ended up, they looked at the, the team, looked at their fe February calendar, all their upcoming events, and reviewed that. And the middle school met on January the 18th, and they had 13 fundraiser requests, 11 field trip requests, no facility use requests. Mr. Young did several updates on the following personnel. Some of their personnel shifted after Christmas, athletics and extracurricular STEAM and their trout projects. And then the, in three three of the next nine weeks is going to take, they're going to take their uh, exploratory classes and work on their writing skills. And then two of their students are attending a, fe a February science fair at Ryan Hart College. And the high school met on the 18th of January. They had 10 fundraisers, 13 field trip requests, and no facility use requests. And like I said, Dr. Ramsey went through the same thing that uh, all of them did. And then he shared, he kind of shared the information he had shared with y'all last month at the meeting about, especially like on uh, freshman focus and how that was going. And any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hyde. Mr. Chair, item number eight on the agenda is the Bannon County 4-H update. And I'd like to invite Chief Academic Officer Lucas Roof. Good evening, board. Uh, for this, uh, I, I don't want to steal too much of, of her thunder, but we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce uh, Ashley Hoppers here, uh, to, and she is going to then turn around and introduce our new full-time 4-H agent. And this is the first time we've had this opportunity in quite a while, and we're just extremely, extremely excited 
about all the opportunity that this can provide, not only for elementary school students, but middle school and high school students as well. So with all that said, Ashley, Kate, come on down. Thank you, Mr. Ruth. Um, what a pleasure and honor it is to be here before you this evening. I am continually inspired by this community, our school system. It's just such a pleasure to be able to introduce um, Kate Phillips, our new 4-H agent, um, to Fannin County. As Mr. Roof said, you know, this we're making history in Fannin County. I don't believe, I've tried to go into the records, and I don't believe we've ever had a fully dedicated 4-H agent to Fannin County ever, to my knowledge. So this is huge. This is super exciting. And as Mr. Roof said, historically, we've been kind of restricted to the elementary school level just because of capacity. But now we have a full-time UGA faculty member representing 4-H, so our capacity is going to be increased tremendously. So I can rattle off a bunch of things that um, I know Kate's capable of doing, but I think it would be better if she shared um, some of her inspiration and thoughts of what she could bring to this community, because she started last Wednesday, and wow, I am so impressed with how much she's already gotten done. So Kate, if you'd like to share a few words. All right, um, I just want to say I'm really excited to be here and really excited to be the 4-H agent serving this community. Um, a little update on what we've gotten done so far. Uh, we are working for this year to get into the fourth and fifth grade classrooms starting later this month is when 4-H will actually start being in the classrooms and we will be meeting for three times and next year's goals are to expand into the middle and the high school offering the programming for the older kids and getting them involved as well we have lots of different programming opportunities and we will be taking kids to camp this summer as well thank you any questions all right i'd like miss hopper thank you for your dedication and miss phillips welcome to the family Mr. Chair, item number nine on the agenda is S for three art budget update for stakeholder input. I'd like to invite Mr. Inslee forward. Good afternoon, board. Uh, I have the great opportunity to be able to oversee a, the most part of our uh, CARES funding. And so tonight we're going to share with you just some of the items that we got in our budget for our CARES three, which is ARP. American Rescue Plan. <clears throat> Ms. Finley, if you want to go on up through. These are the items that we have budgeted. It's a $6.792 million budget, and we received all of those funds by September 16, 2021. As of December the 31st, we've spent 35.9% of those funds. But if you look over on the right side, you can see the items that we have uh, basically budgeted for uh, this, this particular fund. A lot of it is personnel. We're able to fund over 20 positions uh, with this funding. You can see that we have five intervention coordinators for not only FY22, but 23 and 24. We have uh, a parent coordinator now at the Fannin County High School for all three years. We also have six exploratory teachers at the Fannin County Middle School. And we also have a crisis counselor uh, for all three years. And also we have two interventionists that are designated at each school to work on ELA and math. We've been able to do uh, a lot of software upgrades. Uh, you can see that we've got some that also helps with our busing and routing system. We have about 900 Chromebooks. We have some PPE, the uh, protection from COVID-19. We've had a lot of supplies for our nutrition. And we've also done an HVAC replacement at the high school and at the middle school, which were two pretty good sized projects that were over $2 million. We are anticipating the opportunity to possibly have some money that would be not uh, fully used on those last two projects. So we always want to have feedback from our community. And you can reach out to me. This is my contact. Uh, if you are interested in sharing any of your thoughts, you've got my email here. Uh, you also can uh, look there uh, that these funds do run out on September the 20th, 2000, or September 30th, 2024. I've got a link on here that you can actually go to the 
the website on the DOE to show the transparency and all the funding, and also where our plan, our American Rescue Plan, is at on our website. So if you ever have any questions about it, feel free to contact me. But we're always open to input from the community and our stakeholders. So please reach out if you have any opportunities to, to how you want us to help spend the money. Thank you, Mr. Inslee. Question. Yes, sir. These, these funds, they're apart from state funds. Are they funds that were inspired by the, the COVID? Yes, sir. This is federal funds that was uh, given to us from the federal government for COVID, uh, the response to COVID-19. Yes, sir. We, we had CARES 1, CARES 2, and CARES 3, and a few other was, but this is particular one is uh, ARP, which is the what most people call CARES 3, the third, third one we've got. Thank you, Mr. Inslee. Mr. Chair, item number 10 is review of district homeless procedure, and I'd like to invite Director of Student Services, Ms. Jenny Tipton, up, please. Good evening. I, it is my honor to introduce Ms. Tara Cantrell. Um, she is our systems social worker, and she reaches out to so many of our families and our students and helps make um, so many things possible. But this is just one facet of what she does, and she's going to explain it all to you all tonight. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, so I think I've spoken to you guys about this before, um, our policy. Um, so basically, we are required um, for Title I funding to have um, protections in place for students that are experiencing homelessness. So this is, as you're seeing on the board, our policy and procedure, um, which, you know, is kind of lengthy. Um, so, it, but we are in compliance with that. But just to kind of give you a rough overview of what that really says and break it down for you a little bit, um, we are required to identify homeless students. And what we're looking at when we look at homeless students um, is a little bit different than probably what you think of when you think of homeless. Although it, it can incorporate that, it also incorporates uh, a lot of other things. Uh, one of the biggest populations we see when working with homeless students are students that are doubled up. So if I lose my housing and I have to move in with my in-laws or a friend, so now you have two families living in one house. They qualify for homeless under this act. Um, families that are living in any hotel, motel, or trailer parks. And when we're talking about trailer parks here, we're talking more about uh, campground settings where they've pulled campers uh, to stay. And that is becoming increasingly popular in our area. Um, any emergency or transitioning shelters, uh, so the North Georgia Crisis Network would fall under this category. Any public or private places that are not intended to be used as housing. Um, in my career, I've actually encountered one student um, that would do what we call the couch surf. That would stay from friend to friend to friend, but if he couldn't find a friend, I would find him at the Waffle House late at night um, because that was warm. And so um, that's where he would stay. So that kind of gives you an idea of what that would look like for a student. Uh, any abandoned buildings or abandoned houses, uh, any substandard housing. This one's a little tricky because if you think substandard housing, you're thinking about really poor and rundown conditions, which would certainly qualify. But it can also be the nicest house on the lake. But if you can't afford to pay your power bill and you're just making that mortgage and you can't pay the water bill and you can't meet your basic needs in that house, then you can still qualify under this standard. Uh, any of our migratory children qualify for that. Uh, and any children that are left at hospitals or fire stations. Um, you may be more familiar with that when you think of newborn children, but believe it or not, there's actually older children that uh, get left, maybe mental health issues, or they've been in an abusive situation and families will just drop them there and leave them. So they obviously would qualify as well. So once those students are identified, we do some things in the school system to help make sure that their needs are met at the school. Basically, what we want to do is make sure that they have continuing education and that their services at school stay the same so that they continue their education and are less likely to experience homelessness. So we're going to start them in our school system immediately. So many times we have kids that come to Vanden County from other areas and they um, come here without anything or things are boxed up so they don't have birth certificates or social security cards. If they qualify as homeless, we're going to let them enroll immediately. We're not going to make them dig out that birth certificate or wait until they reapply. Um, that closes educational gaps so that they're more successful. Um, and plus, it provides them a warm, safe place to be. Um, we're going to make sure that they can attend their school of origin or if they so choose their new school. So think about my son attended um, 
West Fannin, but I'm an East Sider, so all my family's on the East Side of the County. Um, if something were to happen and we lost our housing on the West Side of the County and I had to move in with my family on the East Side, my son could have stayed at West Fannin Elementary so that his school stayed the same, even though things at home were a little crazy at that time. So that just helps our children out. Um, we provide transportation assistance. Mr. Inslee will tell you I'm on the phone with him regularly trying to make miracles happen, uh, and he is so great to work with me on that, uh, to make sure that they can get to that school of origin and that they're not, with gas prices really high, not trying to travel from one side of the county to the other. They can attend school while they're waiting on any school records. We don't say that we have to wait until we get those records from their previous schools. We go ahead and get them started, and we kind of shake all that out later. Um, they can participate in any of our after-school activities, any activities that we have, and we do our very best to make sure that, that all barriers are removed. We do not segregate them based on their homelessness, and we make sure that we're very confidential with that because we never want a child to feel like that that is um, an embarrassing factor, that that's something they should be ashamed of. We want them to feel welcome um, and be able to participate in everything. Uh, one of the newest aspects uh, is that we make sure that students in high school earn partial credit. So if you move part of the year in and you've not, especially if you have a school system, like our high school does a block. So they go from August to December, they complete a credit. Some schools go all year uh, before they receive that credit. So sometimes it can get a little dicey as far as getting their everything transferred over. So we have a way to make sure that when they come to us, they're not losing the progress that they made, that they made at the other schools and get further behind. So that's what we do to help our kids uh, in a nutshell, and of course, just try to love them and take care of them as best we can. Thank you, Ms. Tira. Thank you for your presentation, and especially thank you for the work that you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Chair, item number 11 is school happenings, and I would like to welcome Dr. April Hodges to tell us about what's going on at Blue Ridge Elementary. Brave enough to test out our lapel mic for us. Thank you, Dr. Hodges. Mr. Mathis didn't give me a choice. Um, okay. <laughs> guinea pig tonight. So, good evening, Gloria, Dr. Guatney, and Ms. Miller. Thank you for giving me the chance to share some updates about Blue Ridge Elementary School. Um, I want you to take a look at the first slide. I intentionally included the We Are Fannin logo there that we introduced at the beginning of the school year because I think it's very significant. Um, at the beginning of the year, when we did our kick off at the begin with a, a countywide meeting where everyone came together, I felt it was really cool that we were able to say we are Fannin. And we had t-shirts that we shared with our staff members and with you guys because I felt like it brought us all together as a community. Um, I feel like our teachers felt it. I think that spills over into what we do in our schools. And I hope that you can see some of those connections as I speak through my presentation tonight because we try really hard to connect our parents and our community and our students um, all throughout the school year. So I'm going to start by talking about three big community events that we've had since I last spoke. The first one is our Veterans Day program. We had an amazing Veterans Day um, program where our third, fourth, and fifth grade students were able to sing and just bring recognition to all the veterans and the things that they've done for us and the sacrifices that they've made. Um, we had a former staff member that's retired now, Miss Marcy Harper that came and spoke directly to the students and told them what they could do if they had aspirations to be in the military one day. And, and just all the things that she learned and the skills that she gained as a member of the military. And so she shared that with our students and it was fantastic. Um, I want to, to paste, if you'll wait just a minute, Ms. Bentley. In that bottom left picture, you'll see one of our high school students playing tap. And I think it's really awesome that we have high school band members that come and play an incredibly difficult piece and share that with our students because it shows them what they can do someday when they get to high school. Okay. Thank you. We also had a great turnout for our Thanksgiving lunch. As you are probably aware, we have two days of Thanksgiving lunch just due to the, the volume of parents and, and family members that come and join their students in lunch and we just don't have that much space for parking. So we, we make two days of festivities in that center picture, you'll see some of our high school students came down and helped serve our students. Um, and it was just a really tremendous event, and we loved having the families join us on those days. And of course, we can't go without um, speaking about White Christmas. 
we um, that's one of our favorite events throughout the school year. All of our students, they start probably right after Veterans Day practicing their music, and you can hear that Christmas music all throughout the hallways. And so it's really cool to hear them practicing and then watch them get up on stage and just sing their hearts out. They put on their best clothes, and they all just look like big Christmas presents wrapped up in pretty bows on the stage. And they just love their family coming to sing. You can see Mr. Parker up there. He made a guest appearance at our White Christmas um, presentation. So it was just a really fun time. Probably one of our most well-attended events throughout our school year. And we've already recognized Mr. Hodgson Deusman, but I want to recognize him again. He was our school-wide winner for our spelling bee. We also had a runner-up, Ms. Claire Whitener. It was a stiff competition at our school, and then Hashem came and he won the district spelling bee, and we're excited to go with him and watch him represent our district at the regional event on February 25th. This is a really cool connection that we were able to make this year. We hired Miss Debbie Settle, who is a first grade paraprofessional, and her husband is a staff member, or he works for NASA. And so he was able to connect our first grade students with some people that worked on the Artemis launch. And they were able to make posters for the launch. And you can see in the top center picture, our poster was hanging in the, um, the flight center in Florida. They had astronauts that they got to listen to stories as they read them to the students. They made art projects and coloring sheets that they sent to um, the, the members that, were, that participated in the launch. And so it was just really, really neat for them to connect that way. I'm going to share two slides about some literature connections that we've been able to make and um, do something with. Mr. Parker in the Learning Commons read a story by Eve Bunting called Night Tree. And it, it's about a, a fir tree. And he took the students and allowed them to make um, Christmas ornaments that were bird, also bird feeder, feeders. And we have a really cool fir tree that's in the front of our school. And so the students made the bird feeders. They hung them on the tree. And they just got to talk about, you know, sharing with nature, protecting nature, and they had a lot of fun doing it. Our fifth grade students were able to read the Watsons Go to Birmingham, and it talks about civil rights and um, things that happened along that time period in history. And they partnered with um, our literature teacher, our ELA teacher, and our social studies teacher partnered together. The students made newspaper articles about civil rights activists, and they you can see that some of the papers, they actually dyed them in tea and coffee to make them look vintage. Um, and then we had a guest speaker, one of our students' grandmothers came and spoke about her experience during that time in the, in, during the civil rights movement. And what she um, was able to share with them was pretty cool for the students to enjoy. At Christmas time as well, we had two projects that we used um, to reach out into the community. Our first graders, they decorated cards and made cards to send to a senior center. And then in the Learning Commons, Commons Mr. Parker um, had the students decorate cards that they sent to the Angel pro Project. So they were able to distribute those cards all over the country to, to people that needed them, who needed some Christmas cheer. We were able to celebrate 100 days of school, which um, sounds like a long time, and it really is. 100 days of learning is something to be celebrated. We're over halfway through the school year, and our students celebrated by dressing up as people of the older generation, and they also were able to um, decorate their shirts or their pants with 100 items. And so they spent the whole day counting to 100, um, making things from, making 100 items, and they, they just celebrated all day long with the learning activities. It was a lot of fun. We have fourth grade students who have been working on two big projects. One is conservation. Our fourth grade students learn about the water cycle, and they challenge staff members and students to swap out one soda or coffee or something that they purchase every day and donate, donate that money to a, a less fortunate community who needs water. And so you can see the Bontbonna community, that center picture is the community they partnered with. And they actually just got an update yesterday and they received a picture of the running water that their donation helped provide to that community. And so it was really cool for them to get those updates and, and see what their donation meant to that community and they talked about what the importance of that running water brings to that community. On the left, in that same slide, Ms. Ramsley, you'll see two students right there. 
by the little container. That container is a worm farm. So they're doing some vermicomposting and they are trying to make enough healthy soil so that when it's healthy and ready, it will be donated to Project Chimps and they will use it in their um, habitat over there. We have clubs that have been going on all throughout the school year. Most of the clubs that we have had started already happened during the school day so that any student can, can participate in it. We don't, we don't want students to be limited by being picked up after school or whether or not they have a ride. So we, we create a master schedule to allow our students to be able to go to clubs throughout the, the um, school day. And we have all kinds of clubs represented on this slide. You'll see a photography club. There's a 3D printing club. We have a really cool club that Miss Allie started this year called, um, oh, it just left me. What is it? Bucket list, thank you, I forgot it. Um, they do so many different things in that club. They get to go and experience guest speakers, like the one in this picture came and spoke about archeology. span So they looked at artifacts, they got to draw artifacts, they learned about dreaming and envisioning for their future. And so that's really cool. We have a makerspace club on the left two pictures that Mr. Parker does in the Learning Commons. If you'll go to the next slide, Mr. Enzo, there's a few more. We have running club, and you can see those on the, the right hand pictures. In the middle, we have a friends club where our general education students partner with our special education students and provide unique opportunities for them to share. And then we have a robotics club on the left. And they're getting ready to, to um, have a, an exhibit and a showcase in February. We're starting a few more um, in the coming weeks. Um, you'll see that we down at the bottom, we have arts and crafts, crafts about to start, a garden club, an archery club, and a cooking club. Those will all happen after school. We're super proud of Mr. Parker. We call him our learning common superhero. He calls himself Captain Commons, but he was able to go to a national conference um, it's called the Future of Educational Technology Conference, and he presented at that conference. He was in um he was in a big like ballroom setting, and he was only supposed to have 10 to 12 participants in his roundtable table discussion. And they had to move to a different part of the room because he had between 30 and 40 participants. And he was able to share his Beanstack program, how he uses it to get students motivated to read, and it was really cool. We're super super proud of him. We were able to get our dental bus, Ms. Tara Cantrell and Sheena Reimer were able to help secure that for our schools. This is the first time that's ever happened since I've been here. Um, I think we had between 10 and 15 students that were able to receive services. Some of them had never received dental services before. We had one student that was referred to, for some more um, in-depth in dental work. And so these children are very fortunate to be able to have that opportunity in our community. So it's really cool. And this is something that we're really, really excited about. We applied and had the opportunity to apply for a rural education safety grant. And it was pretty much wide open. We could, earn, we could ask for up to $50,000 of reward. And we asked to um, get an, enough money to provide fencing around our campus so that we could um, keep students away from the highway. Um, we are planning to enclose our whole pre-K playground and then put fencing around most of our campus so that it is not accessible to the road. Um, and we've also asked for some radios and bullhorns just for communication. And we earned $47,952 worth of awards. We're super proud of that. And I'd like to conclude by saying thank you to all of you. Thank you to our, our district office, official office staff, and my fellow principals for supporting Blue Ridge and all we do throughout the school year. Thank you, Mr. Hodges. Thank you.
Mr. Chair, item number 12 on the agenda is Central Office Update, and I'd like to invite Chief Academic Officer Lucas Reef, along with Director of Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Connie Huff, to talk about behavior support, student discipline, and instructional integrity. Yes, we're going to tag team this presentation, so we're going to be passing the mic back and forth. If anybody drops it, it'll probably be my fault because uh, Dr. Huff's more coordinated than me. So, um, first thing, you know, this is a this is kind of a springboard. Or last month's a presentation was kind of a springboard for this month. This is a continuation of uh, the presentation that Dr. Huff uh, presented uh, last month uh, when it comes to curriculum and instruction. And also, I want to thank uh, Dr. Huff for organizing the the templates and organizing this presentation with all the uh, beautiful pastel colors that, that she used uh, throughout the presentation. We're fast forwarding to spring, and I appreciate that as well. Um, but as much uh, everything that we do when it comes to behavior, uh, behavior support, discipline, instructional integrity, uh, like it said, it, it is all uh, something that's taken place um, uh, as a team. I mean, with several of our, our district members and, of course, our school staff, it is always a team effort. And one thing that I know we want to make sure that we understand is that effective and solid tier one instruction cannot happen without a safe, orderly, and engaging environment. It, it's just it's just not possible. So we you know we strive to make sure that that environment is created, and that's how it ties to instruction. That's how behavior ties to instruction. So the so moving on, Mr. Ensley, and I'll, I'll try to prompt you as we go, go through here. Uh, but the first thing is uh, I want to give uh, Mr. Inslee a shout out, uh, you know, for what he does when it comes to uh, helping with the student code of conduct. Um, he, he helps us maintain compliance and consistency with the code of conduct with the with the principals, and um, and and he makes sure, you know, he, he works with them. Uh, met just a couple weeks ago, going through the discipline matrix and uh, works with our school, to make sure again that that consistency is is there, and all of our code of conduct. Our code of conducts they're in our uh, school handbooks so uh, for any parent that, that needs to see that uh, those are always there in the handbook uh, also moving forward moving on uh, we're talking about the team effort uh, with our student information department uh, led by miss finley of course you, you guys know you know we we know that infinite campus that's a platform uh, that where that data is entered and tracked and reported to the state but if that's not entered uh, correctly and not entered accurately then it, it really has it, it, it has no meaning. So uh, Ms. Finley and her team there, they do a phenomenal job of making sure that the data, again, is tracked and reported and reported accurately uh, to the DOE the way that it needs to be. So, you know, uh, similar to what I said before, I mean, why examine discipline data? What, you know, why, why do that? You know, the, the, one of the main reasons for, for making sure that we do this and that we uh, pay attention to discipline and pay attention to behavior is to help clear the runway uh, for our for our teachers and to help clear the runway for our students so that they can be successful. And again, just trying to promote that safe, uh, well-managed, and engaged classroom uh, to facilitate teacher and student success. Uh, that's what that's what our goal is. That's what we're trying to do, and that's the, that's what we're striving to improve upon every day, every month, every year. So we're always looking to get better. And with that said, I'm gonna that's here's our first tag team. I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Dr. Huff. Thank you, sir. What you see up here is our enrollment for the district, and we just want to keep this in mind as we get into some of our other slides. Our total count is just under 2,800 right now, and when we start talking about some of these other numbers, we get into some percentages, so we just wanted to point that part out. And this this slide is uh, something that you know we feel like is extremely important to see, and, and again, uh, Dr. Huff, uh, Created this pie chart, but uh, and but this is telling. So when we we think about our students and we think about um, you know the what are our students like overall? Well, this this pie chart says so much because what this is showing you is that out of those students, we have 81 percent of our students that have no discipline referral whatsoever, none. So K through 12, 81 percent of our students have zero discipline referrals, zero discipline record, uh, and, and those kids, I mean, that, that's, that's phenomenal. If you look at other school systems, 
and other school systems pie chart like this, it's not going to look like that. I mean, we are extremely blessed. Uh, our small our small town values, uh, the, the families, uh, the expectations from our families, uh, and, and, and what we work with, we are so blessed to have the kids and, again, have the families to be able to have a pie chart like this. And when you look at the other, you know, that 19%, the students with discipline, many of those have uh, multiple discipline occurrences, you know, and that's a, that's a topic, that's something, uh, you know, you look in, in, the, in society uh, with uh, recidivism, and that's the tendency of a person to continue, continuously reoffend or make the same mistake over and over again. And that, and that can be a natural thing that happens. And so our job, of course, is to work with the families, work with the students to break out of that cycle. And that's our goal as we go along all the time so that those kids can be successful. Um, and, but, you know, I just want to, when, when you look at that again, to, to say something, you know, to, to think that our schools or our school system is out of control with discipline, uh, that, that's a disrespect to the 81% of kids that literally have zero discipline occurrences whatsoever. So again, we're just, I can't say enough how blessed we are as a community to be able to have a pie chart that looks like that. And from here you see a slide that shows you the breakdown by numbers for each of our schools. And of course our high school has our largest number of students, so it would be natural that they would also then have the, the higher count. Um, and when you look at our elementary schools, you would expect them to be very similar. Now, I do want to point out that while East Fannin's number is a little bit higher than the other, East Fannin has the highest number of buses of all of our elementary schools. And for those of you that know the, the lay of the land over on the east side, a child might get on that bus and ride all the way up to Cooper's Creek, which is going to be over an hour. Or they may be headed all the way out to Culberson. So sometimes a lot of that mischief uh, that occurs is on the bus when there are fewer eyes looking straight at you. So that does account for why that number is a little bit different from the others. Now, what you have here, I know that looks uh, a little hard on the eyes with all the different colors. We have all of our behavior events represented there. There were 1,340 events, and they fell into like 81 different categories. But the, the top four categories there had to do with uh, attendance related. That's like not being where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, and cutting class, which was about 19%. And, you know, that, that gets into some of those older students who are a little more crafty and uh, more creative about how they'd like to spend their time. Uh, incivility, which just means that uh, sometimes you don't follow directions and sometimes you might talk back a little bit. We have about 13% there. Disorderly conduct, which has a lot to do with that bus discipline, is about 10%. And then some other general bus misbehavior, which was just over 7%. So, uh, as Mr. Lucas alluded to earlier, I, we have some really great kids. What you see here, it's a lot of mischief. You know, it's a lot of silliness, and it's a lot of testing of boundaries, which are just natural things for students. Uh, you know, we, we did those things when we were kids, and it is unrealistic to think that those things won't also go on with the, the students we have met. Mr. Galloway's smiling because we talked a little bit about some of that mischief that went over at, at East Fannin back in the day. I'm not going to tell about that, Mr. Galloway, not at all. I'd have to tell on myself first. So when you look at our next chart, this has to do with consequences assigned by our administrators, and there are 37 different consequences that went on. The, the biggest represented the color there is the blue, which is in-school suspension. With in-school suspension, that means you're more or less grounded at school. You don't get to go out and hubbub with your buddies and sit in the classroom and do all that. You still get to be at school. You still get to do your work, but it's in a little room removed from all the fun stuff where you and a, a teacher or a parapro are making sure you take care of your business. Um, others that we see there is time out less than a day at the middle school. That's one that is commonly used when you have misbehaved on the bus and you need a little time away, but we don't want to rob you of that instructional time. Verbal warnings, we, we do have a lot of those. About 11% of what you see there is verbal warning because sometimes you just need to talk about it. You need that reminder that that was not what you were expected to do and we have to do better next time. Uh, one of the things that's up there is OSS at 
just about 5.8%. The majority of that comes, unfortunately, from our students who are already assigned to the alternative school because once you reach that point, the number of uh, options you have as, as an administrator for discipline are greatly diminished. Uh, and one thing I would like to point out with this is when our administrators are talking with students, assigning consequences, they're also picking up that telephone and they're calling home because we have to talk to those parents. We have to let them know, listen, we've had a little mistake happen and we're going to fix it. There might be some consequences, but there aren't going to be hard feelings and we're going to just do better next time. Uh, on our next slide, something we have to keep in mind, especially with our younger students, as you see those little faces there, behavior is communication. And sometimes they don't have the words or the complex thoughts to be able to express themselves as we would hope. You know, if someone is fussing and saying some words they shouldn't say or they're lashing out, it's because they don't know exactly how else to deal with that. And when we talk about discipline, discipline isn't just always about punishment. We are supposed to work to train the child in the way they're supposed to go. And those opportunities sometimes happen when they're removed from the classroom and they're sitting with one administrator to talk about what's happened, talk about what the consequence is, and think about how we're going to do better the next time around. You know, sometimes it does take a little bit more time and attention than we would hope to get these behaviors corrected. But we're a pretty persistent bunch, and we're going to give them those opportunities and the grace that they need to try to make it right for the next time. Um, I've got a little bit of data here for you as well, and it just talks about what it takes for a student to learn new behavior. And to learn something new, you have to repeat it on average eight times, which sounds like a lot, but look at that next one there. It talks about how much time it takes to unlearn an old behavior and replace it with a new one. And we go from 8 to 28 there. So it, it, it works in our favor if we're training them correctly from the very get-go. Our next slide there talks about how effective it is if we can just improve behaviors by pointing out what things are doing, students are doing well. You know, back in the day, I might walk by Mr. Lucas's desk and pat him and tell him what a good job he was doing. And I would hope that that would spur him on to just want to do better next time. <laughs> I taught Lucas. I taught Lucas. There, there's, there's more than one of us in the room who did teach Mr. Lucas. He was great. Uh, if we go on to our next slide, we're going to talk just a little bit about our current action items. These are things that are going on within the current year. Our strategy number one to deal with behaviors is that classroom teacher deals with that stuff right there in her classroom in his or her domain until it reaches a point where unfortunately someone else might have to step in and help out because the behavior is either so persistent or disruptive that they, they need to go to a quiet place to talk to someone else about it. Strategy two is we do have our NTSS process soon to even have a behavior specialist on staff to help us with those situations that need a little bit more time and attention. And strategy four, it's what I talked about last time, it's what we'll continue to talk about in our sessions is we're building staff capacity. We want to give everyone the tools they need to do their job and do it well. And uh, we, we already mentioned those trainings that had been occurring. I think the batteries just are getting replaced. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, and our most recent one that we alluded to was our session with our principals where we went over the discipline matrix. We talked about that data that you had just seen to make sure we're all on the same page talking about where we are and where we intend to go. I'm glad you made no other stops. <laughs> And so to, to summarize, uh, as, as 
Dr. Hope say, and you know, looking at, at what we've done this year and 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 what we have, you know, coming and, and, and planning um, some things to consider. You know, looking at our vision and for next year and, and where we want to go for next year. We want to continue to equip our teachers, continue to equip our admin when it comes to skills that they need to uh, establish, and also with data review, uh, continuing uh, monthly uh, to to look at the data and analyze the data so that we can address behaviors based on that data and and really try to, to dig in and and make sure that we're not falling into that you know definition of insanity where you know we're continuing to try to approach the same problem the same way uh, you know and not getting the results we want so really digging in uh, making data driven decisions and also promoting good behavior uh, continuing to celebrate the successes of students that meet expectations uh, like, like Dr. Huff uh, pointed out there about you know, uh, when it comes to, to students and positive feedback. I mean, I know that from from uh, time spent coaching, uh, time spent uh, as a as a principal with with teachers. It works with adults and and students. Uh, if we take time to 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 share with them uh, what they're doing right and what they're doing well, uh, they're more likely to listen whenever you have to share with them what they're what needs to be corrected. Uh, and then one of the big things again. Um, uh, pointing out is that we want to continue uh, to to raise the bar when it comes to being firm with with behaviors that lead to non-negotiable consequences. You know things uh, that could be hurting others. Uh, you know, drugs, alcohol, anything that causes a truly unsafe environment. Being extremely firm uh, with with what happens there, uh, but at the same time trying to find that balance. You know, between the, the positive and, and staying firm with that. Um, some different things we're looking at when it comes to general practice, uh, restructuring some of the class schedules to decrease attendance-based issues uh, such as tardies and skipping class, um, and then also changing how we, uh, how we deal with certain behaviors uh, such as vaping and e-cigarettes and how we handle that. Uh, we're looking at you know, making some different um, uh, decisions there that, that could alter how we how we handle those situations uh, but again um, and I you know drive it home uh, one more time that when, when we look at effective tier one instruction it is not possible to have effective tier one classroom instruction without a safe well-managed and engaging classroom environment so that's what we uh, strive to provide uh, every single day and just want to keep improving and getting better when it comes to that didn't hear anywhere that y'all mentioned that you reward poor behavior with reward. Thank you and team. I think you as well. That's always a team effort. Mr. Chair, item number 13 is public comment. Mr. Danner, do we have any public comment? No, ma'am. No public comment. Okay. okay. Well, Mr. Chair, with no public comment, I'd like to recommend going on to number 14 with facilities update. Mr. Danner? Thank you, Ms. Miller. A good evening, board. Uh, last two months, I have forgot, but I'm not forgetting this time. Work orders for the maintenance department since January, July the 1st through today, 1,348 recorded completed. The guys at the shop are a uh, little notification there. So. Uh, this is at the PAC, our regular in, uh, inspection. Actually, the phone quit working, so we actually had to uh, get a new car, go ahead and get, we'll get a car and get it replaced. It's at the stadium at the, at the high school. Uh, some old track equipment that actually that you were salvaged months ago. We finally got rid of it. Uh, this is at the middle school. Uh, this is what Mr. Enzi was talking about. There's some of the barred, some of the barred units that were replaced. Uh, there's five more that will be replaced on the 17th, and that job will be complete. Uh, again, that was paid for out of CARES money for the middle school. New fire alarm also at the middle school, and that was paid for out of some lost money. And uh, so again, that was well overdue. Uh, go ahead, Mr. 
is new thermostats throughout the entire building uh, at the middle school. These are also coming to the high school. Uh, so that's something that we control also. So even though uh, just like what's on the wall here, we can control it. Uh, these are now coming at the middle school. They're not at the high school yet. This is more some of the CARES money at the middle school, uh, some of the rooftop units, and some of the PMUs there at the middle school. I don't even want to talk about that day. Keep on going, Mr. Crane. That's our bad weather day. Trees everywhere. I think that was out on Weaver Creek. Bus pad over at the, the training pad at the at transportation facility. We finally got it striped. Uh, it took a good long time to get the professional striper up here. Again, Tommy Jordan uh, come up with that uh, diagram. So again, it's, it's what they want. So again, we actually watched them yesterday, I think it was, had the cones out, driving them out there, pretty much few years. Mr. Chair, item number 15 is to approve to rescind CM at risk recommendation and restart process. Mr. Danner? Yeah, this is a uh, common practice when you do an uh, CM at risk or RFQ. Uh, there was a technicality uh, in that section. We talked to the DOE, we talked to Pioneer Risa, uh, the consultants there, common practice. Uh, they, they requested that we redo the CMS. So again, we're going to be as transparent as we can, uh, make sure we cross every T, dot every I. So again, uh, if we will send this today, uh, tomorrow, uh, this will be sent back out. And hopefully we will name a CM at risk on March the 30th. Let the local board train. Ms. Doss, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve as presented. Very good. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to rescind the CM at risk recommendation. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote unanimous, Mr. Carries. Okay. Mr. Chair, item number 16 is um, to approve school quarterly financial reports. Ms. Wynn. Good evening, Ms. Miller, Dr. Blotney, board. So we have our quarterly reports through December 31st, 2022 for all of our schools. We'll start off with Blue Ridge. We have East Bannon Elementary School. West Bannon Elementary School. Bannon Middle School. Bannon High School, and then our school for Katie. That's our school for the reports. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve as presented. We have a recommendation, board. Do I hear a motion? So move. Motion to approve the financial reports as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor? It is unanimous. Motion carries. I scroll through those numbers fairly quickly. We've had the opportunity to review those prior to the meeting, but for anyone in the audience that wishes to look at that, it is available on our website. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, item number 17 is to 
item number 17 is to approve district financial reports with him. Here we have our general fund through December the 31st. We are at 66.56% complete on our local revenue versus 53.93% from the prior year. Our total revenues are at 59.69% versus 52.38% from the prior year. Our total expenses are at 44.49% this year versus 45.21% last year. And that's our general fund, and it shows our open encumbrances. And then we can scroll on to our capital project. And it shows our construction, our open encumbrances, and everything for our current six months of revenues and expenditures. And then continue on to our special revenues. And that shows the same for all of those funds. And then we'll have our school nutrition. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve the minutes. I have a recommendation to approve. I hear a motion to approve the district financial report. So moved. And a second. You have a second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote is unanimous. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, number, item number 18 is to approve the FY 2024 budget calendar. Ms. Wynn? Yes, sir. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, bu our budget calendar, this is just our standard budget calendar. We start planning in February. We look at our different resources, our goals, evaluate programs, personnel resources, operating resources. You know, and, and we budget all the way through May. This is the standard calendar, but I do want to point out at the bottom of our calendar, um, we have the note that we can change this calendar based upon if we need to wait on different resources, different information. So at any time that the board decides, we can change this timeline um, to extend the timeline if necessary. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve as presented. I hear a motion to approve the budget calendar as presented. So moved. And a second. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Chair, item number 19 is plus update. It's for information purposes only, so no action will be needed. Ms. Wynn? We received $900,978. And 69 cents in December. That is 6.3 percent growth from the prior December. And we have we're about at our halfway mark in collections in our response. But thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. right, Mr. Chair, item number 20 is to approve class of 2023 graduation date and a prom update. I would like to invite Dr. Scott Ramsey, the Benning County High School principal, to come forward, please. Dr. Ramsey. Board. I promise to be brief this time. Uh, our, our, uh, our prom this year will be on Saturday, April 29th at White Path Creek Farms from 8 to 11. All students and guests attending the prom will be breathalyzed uh, by the Fannin County Sheriff's Department. Uh, we changed this event from its location last year to include parking and access to it. The event will be completed by 11 so that students are able to abide by the state of the teenage driving laws. And then uh, propose that our high school graduation will be set for Friday, May 19th in the stadium at 8 p.m. If there is inclement weather, then the ceremony will be held in the new gym on the same day and time. There is a plan in place to address seating and open place. We have to use this option for the inside. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve the graduation date as presented. I have a recommendation. Do I hear a motion? You have that motion. And a second. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Votes unanimous. Motion carries. Yeah, yeah worried me a little bit. On I that. know. Thank That's you, Dr. Ramsey. I was like, we are going to graduate, y'all. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the wrong day, Dr. Ramsey. <laughs> Mr. Chair, item number 21 is to approve the school year 2023-2024 school calendar. Mr. Danner. 
Yes, Ms. Miller, uh, we had our calendar uh, committee meeting uh, back about several weeks ago. Matter of fact, and, uh, after a couple hours of the meeting, the committee uh, created two calendars that were sent out to the staff back of the Paul uh, County, County Schools. Option one, uh, option one highlight was a traditional one week off of Thanksgiving. Graduation date. Option two was a later start date. Probably a three-day, uh, three-day Thanksgiving break, early graduation date. So that was sent out to the faculty and staff. We thought that was going to be a very tight vote, but it was not. Uh, uh, Sixty-seven percent voted on option one. Thirty-three percent voted on option two. So. Mr. Chair, I make the recommendation to approve as presented. Do I hear a motion? I move. And a second. Second. All right. Any discussion? <laughs> All those. I'm sorry. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Vote unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair, item number 22 is to approve technology items as surf plates. Ms. Heather Finley. Good evening. Um, this is our, uh, actually doing a look, this a little early, some early spring cleaning this year, but um, I asked for you to approve some surplus items. Um, we have some items at our office, and some of those are fixed assets and financial and accounting rules require us to um, list those um, separately. So can you scroll on this one? with uh, their serial numbers, so we'll be able to take those off our fixed asset list. Um, and then we have a surplus list from each school. And then what we do with all of these items is um, after your approval, we list them on DevDeal's Dev website and uh, make some money off of it. Of course, we remove all of our hard drives, but uh, we still make really good money. In the fall, we made over $51,000 So. Uh, be excited to see um, how this turns out, but um, I respectfully ask for your approval to approve these items as surplus. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve as presented. Do I hear a motion? So moved. <laughs> <laughs> and a second. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Votes unanimous. Motion carries. I, I, Mr. Chair, item number three is to approve technology items as salvage. And again, I want Director of Technology and Information Services, Ms. Heather Finley, please. Um, so these listings are always small. I see this and sell all kinds of stuff, apparently. But uh, we do have some items here um, that um, are either not appropriate for resale or just we've parted them to death and they're <laughs> really ready for salvage. Uh, so we have some items. And then each school has some items too for salvage. Um, and again, we remove and destroy all these hard drives before we get them to our salvage person. Um, and uh, they can come up. It's for your approval to um, name these items as salvage. And when we get done with our service, we'll have the uh, recycler come and pick them up. Excellent. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve as presented. We have a recommendation. Do I hear a motion? Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Finley. Mr. Chair, item number 24 is to approve MEC bus use request and like to invite Assistant Superintendent Robert Inslee forward, please. Good afternoon again, board. Uh, Dr. Watney, Ms. Miller. Uh, one thing I I neglected to say in our CARES, I wanted to share. Um, we have to use 20% of that budget for student loss, you know, like for, for education purposes. We actually use 53.82% of that budget to close those gaps for our kids. So I think that's a tremendous thing that our board does to be able to, to make sure that our kids are getting what they need. A lot of those are some of those things that you saw in Ms. Connie's presentation with those. Thank you for that. I want to 
to share that. Uh, next on the agenda for, for us is the MEC bus request. Uh, they have asked for a bus for February the 15th to be picked up, uh, leave MEC, uh, go downtown uh, to the Blue, Blue Ridge at Mountain Mama's Coffee Shop, uh, and then return to MEC, and then on Thursday, February the 16th, pick them up and drive to Dalton State in LJ, Georgia, uh, then pick them up and drive to Chick-fil-A in LJ and return to MEC at 6 o'clock. Both trips will have about 14 total students and two chaperones, and MEC will be responsible for the cost and fuel of the uh, cost of the fuel and the cost of the drive. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I make a recommendation to approve as presented. A recommendation to hear a motion to approve the MEC bus use request. You have that motion. And a second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote is unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ramsley. Mr. Chair, item number 25 is to approve bus salvage and transfer to county government. Mr. Ramsley? Yes, ma'am. I am extremely excited to uh, ask for your approval to salvage what I call the kudzu bus. Because if you've seen it, it was in the kudzu and it has the old shop. And uh, so uh, we would like to declare that salvage and then the next step if with your approval, I'll go a little further. So, first step would be to declare it as salvage. It is a 2003 International CE 300 bus. Mr. Ainsley, we're going to do these together. So okay, we'll just continue. Together. okay. Yes, sir. All right. Um, the second part of this is once it is declared as salvage, I, we would like to transfer that um, of property to the Fannin County government where that they can use it for training skills. And uh, this would, of course, we have a title in hand that we could give to them. They would be able to use it to practice on extracting from the bus, you know, doing drills, do you know the bus, whatever they need to do. But we we would be able to take it and put all that wherever they need to. Mr. Chair, I've also communicated with um, Robert Graham and Mr. Hensley, and they're both very excited about this and welcome this opportunity. So with that said, I would like to make a recommendation to approve this presented. Very well. <clears throat> Do I hear a motion to that effect? You have that motion. And a second? Second. Any discussion? I think that's an excellent use of the kids in the house. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Votes unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hensley. Mr. Chair, item number 26 is local board training information and updates, and I would like to invite Chief Academic Officer Luke Spruth forward. Good evening again, board. Uh, uh, we put uh, two items in here underneath this, and uh, the first item uh, when it comes to local board training, uh, in order for you to remain uh, exemplary board, uh, one task is to be sure that you have reviewed that you've received a hard copy of the Code of Ethics and a hard copy of the Code of Conduct uh, and Conflict of Interest. Sorry about that. And so on your podiums uh, at this point, you should have both of those copies uh, for the Code of Ethics or, and also for the uh, Conflict of Interest. And so as you remember also, uh, we, we reviewed uh, these two items with you on a video uh, previously and then also on the the, the normal uh, video that we give you as well uh, so and then coming up when we have our local board training uh, next date on March 30th uh, there will be a document there for you to sign that you've received and reviewed these these documents so that's the first item there just uh, to make sure that we've we've gone through uh, again those documents the next item is uh, just a reminder that uh, the board self-assessment, we did launch that. Mary Ann Walker did launch that to all of you last week uh, to your emails. And so at this point, if you've not taken that self-assessment, this is just a reminder to, to be sure to take that self-assessment and, and try to get that done ASAP. And again, that is also uh, an item that is required for you to remain and, and remain that exemplary board status. Um, the next uh, local board training date, that will be uh, March 30th. Uh, we will go over more details at the March board meeting. 
and uh, we're excited about that date uh, uh, for what we'll do there. Uh, I know uh, when it comes to what's going to happen, we're going to make sure we visit uh, all four schools besides the high school because we visited the high school uh, at the previous date in the fall. So again, we're looking forward to that. More, uh, all the details to follow at the next board meeting uh, about that date. And Mr. Roof, just for clarification, there's no action needed on any of these items, is that correct? No, no action needed. Excellent, thank you. Thank you for your work on this, and board, thank you for being willing to take the extra steps to um, do these activities. Sir. Mr. Chair, item number 27 is executive session, and I would like to recommend executive session for personnel, student information, and to consult with legal counsel. Very good to hear a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Vote unanimous.
All right. May I have a motion to resume our uh, board meeting? So moved. And a second? Yes. A second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Motion carries. No action was taken in executive session. I do, however, need, um, need I need a motion to approve the minutes from our executive session on December 8, 2022. So moved. A motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Vote is unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number 28 is personnel. If you want to uh, ask you to refer to the personnel sheet. Mr. Chair, the first set of names will do collectively. They're all resignations. I'll read those um, out and then. Okay, the first um, two resignations is Lisa Cheatham and First one is Lisa Cheatham, um, effective date 1 20 2023. Do I have, I make a recommendation? We have a recommendation to hear a motion. I'll move. Second. Second. All those in favor, vote unanimous, motion carries. Next one is Mike Hoopa, effective 1 31 2023. Mr. Yep. Chair, I make a recommendation. A motion, please. So move. And a second. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Vote unanimous. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, the next two will be together. It's um, resignation of Kimberly Greenway and Angela Usher, both effective 2 10 2023. Make right a recommendation. Motion. So moved. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Vote unanimous. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation for resignation for um, Dr. Michael Gwatney, effective 3 31 2023. Any recommendation? Do I hear a motion? I mean, you let you go. <laughs> I'll make that motion. I have a second. You have a second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Votes unanimous. Motion carries. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation for resignation for Sarah Davis and Melissa Reese, effective 5 2023. Chair, will obtain a motion. I have that motion. Second. Second. Third. Third. <laughs> All those in favor? Votes unanimous. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make recommendations um, pending completion of paperwork, background check, and training requirements. Um, Ms. Melissa. Annis School Nutrition Program effective 2 10 2023. We have a recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Vote unanimous. Motion carries. I'd like to make a recommendation for Miss Jackie Neal, part of the professional staff effective for the school year 2023 2024. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Vote is unanimous. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation for substitute employees pending completion of paperwork, background check, and training requirements. We'll do the first set collectively with um, all with the same start date of 2-13-2023, and that is Jessica Cochran, Daniel Farrar, Kristen Hunt, Lee Loy, Amber Reed, and Heather Young, all substitute teachers. Do I hear a motion? So move. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Votes unanimous. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation for Ms. Sarah Davis as a substitute teacher for the school year 2023-2024. I'll 
I'll make that motion. Thank you. All those, all those in favor? Vote unanimous. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, this next one is for information um, purposes only. It's a transfer. We're doing information purposes only because the position was posted. And for transparency purposes, we want to make the announcement that Ms. Heather Cobb um, is moving from East Bain into the high school in the school nutrition program effective 2 10 2023 as a manager. Mm -hmm. Yes, and when also, I'd also like to announce and congratulate Ms. Um, Melissa Annis, who will also be going from assistant manager to manager as well in the nutrition program. All right. Mr. Chair, item number 29, the superintendent comments, and I would like to defer this to Dr. Michael White. Well, I just want to say thank you uh, to this board and to this school district for everything and all the opportunities that, that I've been afforded, the ability to uh, lead this district as superintendent. And having graduated from this district and, and been a substitute, been a parapet teacher, assistant principal, principal, director, so many different jobs that I've gotten to do in this school district, and all of them just been such a blessing and it's been because of the people that I've been blessed to have in my career uh, throughout the school system. So, so thankful, thankful for, for this board and past board, past leadership in this district. This truly is a wonderful place. Again, just so so thankful for all of God's blessings in the schools. And I appreciate and respect all the work that my colleagues at every level in this district do on behalf of the kids of Bennett County. Just want to say thank you. So and, and I'm so proud of Shannon. It's hard to sit up here, and especially the, the, the most difficult thing kind of logistically to keep organized and do right is that personnel sheet. And um, we can just be hiring or firing anybody <laughs> you know, up here. But the authority that this board has to do just that, those recommendations reside with the with the superintendent. And, and as your acting superintendent this evening, she got through what was a tough personnel sheet as far as personnel sheets go and the types of recommendations and the different things that are on there. You did a great job with that sheet. Let's give her a round of applause because I am so proud of her. And just and just on top of that, I've been blessed with the opportunity to, to, to work closely with Shannon um, in this transition. So I want to thank the board for that. And it's been an honor to work with you. I'm going to continue to work with you. Uh, but just as we've slowly, since the announcement was made, that, that you will be the next superintendent, I appreciate the flexibility that the board has afforded in us to set that date for a time that, that Shannon's ready. And I can tell you, Shannon's ready. And, and as we move forward, she's going to begin to assume more of the leadership. I mean, obviously, she was approved as the acting superintendent at the next meeting, the annual meetings. I look forward to that. I look forward to swapping this up. And I got me a souvenir. So proud of her and so thankful for you, board. And uh, wraps up my comments. I just want to say thank you. Jim. Mr. Chair. Any further comments, Ms. Miller? to serve the people of this community and to be surrounded by people that I believe in in order to get the job done. We are blessed. Thank you. Indeed. Well, thank, thank you. Uh, Mr. DeWeese, would you like to go first on board member comments? Mr. Bearden? 
I'd just like to take a moment to talk about Rebel Radio. It's been a while since I said anything about it, but I, I do appreciate Rebel Radio. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the winners of our spelling bee. I'm uh, glad we've got a 4-H coordinator now. And uh, thank all of them who presented tonight. I uh, saw something about our welding program in the paper. I'm excited about that. We've got a great welding program coming out. And Miss Miller? Great job. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Out of respect of time, I'll just say thank you for all you who's coming. Love every one of you. All right. Well, Dr. Guatney and Ms. Miller, thank you both. Um, I'm certain, in fact, it's already already manifesting itself that this will go down as a model transition. I thank you both for your willingness to, to coach and be coached and, and uh, such an incredibly smooth transition and efficient transition. So you're both to be commended and, and we certainly appreciate the way that you both approach this. Uh, we'll have a lot more to say and uh, some ceremonies coming up, I'm sure, but Certainly, a model transition. And thank you both for, for keeping the interest of our school system and our kids at the top of that list. Uh, Mr. Ruth and Dr. Hodges had excellent presentations tonight. Thank you for that. Um, education is such a noble career, a profession. I, 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 I'm in awe of each of you. And you find, and I'm not going to do it for a long time, but you find profound wisdom sometimes in the oddest places. One of my scouting associates quoted, I believe it's one of the Lord of the Rings movies, but that all we must decide is what to, is what to do with the time we are given. And that really hit home with me because none of us are promised tomorrow. I can't think of a more admirable way to spend your time than teaching and mentoring the young people that are going to fill our shoes one day. The, it's not just what you teach in the classroom, the, the example you set and, and the values that you impart, the love that you show, show your students, all of those are critical and so admirable. So, Again, I stand in awe of what you did. Uh, I'd like to remind you to remember Mr. Cole in your prayer. He's been our prayer warrior on this board for some time now. He's in need of our prayers. And we certainly wish you to pray for his people because we missed tonight. Uh, that's all I have, so I'll entertain a motion. Oh, excuse me, yes, sir. Thank you. We know we're, we're late tonight. And some business just takes time. But thank you for what you did. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. We've got a second very quickly on that one. All those in favor? Vote you.